dude, you scared me. Why are you wasting time playing video games? Well, wasting time? No. Okay, at this point, this is getting ridiculous. Like, I, I get that you're mourning over your friends still after, you know, they uh, all got murdered by a crazy alternate timeline version of a sentient milk jug with Day of the Two's face taped on it? Uh, yeah, that's like exactly what I was going to say, but I mean, I was going to be like a little bit more sensitive about it, you know? So you were going to say that whole sentence, just like I said it, <laughs> as if that would even be in the slightest bit sensitive. I mean, I did say a little bit more sensitive. Uh, look, Keegan, I've been far too easy on you. I mean, I let you play video games all day. I mean, I took you to see Danny and took me to rob Danny. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Right. But I think it's about time we got back to really making videos. And, more importantly, making money. <laughs> Gee, we still don't make money on the channel. Anyways, I've been looking at our YouTube channel recently, and it's not doing so hot. That's why I need you to come up with a real hit. A fresh new idea for the Cheap and the YouTube channel. Exactly! That's what I'm doing right now. No, you're not. That's a video game. You're not going to become a, a Twitch streamer, are you? What? No, no, I, I don't have the specs for that. I'm doing research for a video. Psh, like, playing video games is research. Quit fooling around, man. Come on, let me show you what I'm talking about. <sighs> Look how well tax evasion did. That view count is insane. But. Look at Grand Theft Danny. I mean, what is this? Like, we've had more subscribers since Tax Evasion, but it's got a lower view count. I mean, I, I just don't get it. What are we doing wrong? Well, I mean, I've seen the difference, but I don't think that's indicative of any failure on our part. Keegan, we need better ideas. New, fresh ideas. Like, like Tax Evasion. You know, the kind of ideas that'll make us hit, like, I don't know, 500 views and make us famous household names. So my original idea was to start a business email. That way people can send in video ideas and brand deals, and then the channel will skyrocket to success. Oh really? Can I see? Of course. Here. Wait, you're using Yahoo Mail? Yeah? What about it? <laughs> You use Bing too, don't you? What's wrong with Bing and Yahoo? It's just, who uses Yahoo? Uh, me? Ah, oh, that's right. You is who. Who is you? You. No, it's Yahoo. It, it says it right there. Look. No, not Yahoo. You are who. Who? You. Me? Yeah, you. So you is who? No, not me. You. Who? You. <coughs> Do you even know what the second person perspective is? Yeah, it's you. Ah, oh, forget it. Show me the dang emails. I've been checking up on it pretty often to see if anyone sends us any gold, but so far it's been rubbish, honestly. I mean, only jugs? What is this? Probably spam, but start it. Just in case. Ah, oh, there's no use. <sighs> the channel's failing. There's no use continuing it. We hit rock bottom when, when we broke into Danny's house. <sighs> There's no recovery from here. Gee, calm down. Do you know how much fun we have making videos together? That's what makes it worth it. Not the numbers and the likes. I mean, maybe for you, but we're still out of ideas. Unless... Unless aliens want to come crashing through the roof to give us a plot. Gee, I've been trying to tell you. I have an idea. Ha! <laughs> With the game? Yes, and before you fuss at me again, hear me out. Keegan, 
Reviews. It's a brand new series on the channel where I review something I'm interested in, maybe crack a few jokes while I'm doing it. People love it, and you don't have to lift a finger. I don't have to lift a finger, you say? Yep, I'll do it all myself. Oh, you should have said that straight out of the gate. Do it, man. Really? Yes. Uh, you'll love it. I, I promise. I'm gonna start now. Go ahead. So you're just gonna stand there? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I recall September 8th, 2020 quite vividly. I was ready to start class on my second week of online college when the professor appeared to be running a little bit late. So while I waited, I picked up my phone to mindlessly scroll whichever social media I happened to click on first. As soon as I opened the phone though, I saw a notification that threw me for a loop. It was a YouTube video and the title had something to do with a calamity and a hundred years ago. And I saw Link. And I Aonuma on the thumbnail. I clicked immediately, adrenaline rushing, unsure of what I was even looking at. As I began watching the video, I realized what I was looking at. It was a prequel game to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm not even kidding. Tears began rushing down my face as I absorbed the splendor that was Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. That's a part of the editing process. Oh, got it. My bad. Please, continue. Do you maybe want to step out and do something else? I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be working on this for, for a while. Oh, um, okay then. <clears throat> the game a few days after launch and loved every second playing through it during my winter break. Despite how much I enjoyed it, it was also the most disappointing game I've ever played. It's now been a full year since that happened. Oh gosh, a full year? I want to take a look back, a bit of a retrospective, to see how this game holds up after my hype glasses have been removed. Playing Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity was a very polarizing experience for me. I love and hate both the core gameplay 
and the narrative. So that's what I'd like to focus on. After our little chat, we'll look into ways we can specifically improve the game's story. If you're unfamiliar with this game I started rambling on about, let me explain. Age of Calamity, despite having Link and Zelda on the front cover, is not a Zelda game. Games in the Legend of Zelda franchise are either 2D or 3D action-adventure games. Age of Calamity is not one of those. Well, they're not one of those in a sense. It's actually a spin-off Zelda game in a subgenre of action games called Musou. Musos are large-scale hack-and-slash games that see you playing as a hero who destroys thousands of foes while completing objectives on a battlefield. Omega Force, the creators of the genre, made Hyrule Warriors in 2014, a Zelda spin-off game that saw Zelda characters from across the series uniting for an epic but non-canonical adventure. Along with the Musou style of gameplay, Hyrule Warriors added other Zelda elements such as needing familiar items to progress past obstacles. And in 2020, six years later, came Age of Calamity. And not only was it a canonical adventure in the Zelda timeline, but it expanded Hyrule Warriors to a far greater scale. It is canonical. You hear me? You hear me, you angry commenters? It's canonical. That's right. What you gonna do about it? Cry? Call your mom? I'd like to see you try. I would describe Age of Calamity's gameplay as explosive fun with a hint of strategy. Enemies from Breath of the Wild have just been copy and pasted a million times on a battlefield, and you and your armies have gotta take them on. The few thousand enemies on the battlefield are no sweat though, cause they're just fodder for you to tear through with your hero's flashy combo moves. It's kind of a turn your brain off and watch explosions type of action, but some skill is still required in all the button mashing. You'll need to learn all your hero's combos to string them together in a way that mows down all your foes in the most efficient way. Bosses have harder hitting attacks and don't go down as easily, so it's important to learn to dodge and counter their attacks effectively. Despite this, Musos still garner quite a lot of hate from gamers. Some just don't find the button mashing gameplay engaging, and I can't refute that. It's simply a difference in taste. What I can refute is the idea that these Musos are only button mashing combat. There's actually a lovely dollop of strategy included in many of these games. Levels are sprawling battlefields filled with outposts and a constant struggle for power. Outposts spawn more troops, so whoever controls an outpost has a stronger army. The thing is, you can only play as your heroes and have little control over your troops. It's up to you to make tough decisions like which outpost is more important to conquer first and which outpost you will let fall into enemy hands. In Age of Calamity, you can order and swap between your heroes, allowing you to strategize by positioning your heroes at different points. Should you spread your heroes out and conquer, or bring them together for a powerful push through a dense area, it's up to you and your micromanaging skills to make those decisions. Sadly though, in practice, Age of Calamity wastes its potential for real strategizing. Mostly due to bad AI, little strategy is even needed to win. Enemies do basically nothing to fight back, and I never experienced one of my outposts falling to an enemy. You can run off and lollygag in the fields, only to return and find your army still holding their own. Even in higher difficulties, all that's changed is the damage enemies deal and the drop rates of healing items. I would have preferred if upping the difficulty also upped enemy AI to be more tactical and aggressive. As I played the third level in the game, I remember a point when Moblins surrounded Zora's domain, and I had little time to stop them all. I had to make a choice on which Moblin I should take down first, and which I should allow to push further into the domain. I was so excited for more intense moments like these to come, but to my disappointment, they never came. But, after many hours of gameplay, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. Ah! If you aren't bored of button mashing by the end of the game, Age of Calamity has a hefty helping of side quests. Some of these side quests put you back on the battlefield to complete more bite-sized missions, and some of the post-game missions were delightfully unique and challenging. I really had to strategize and make careful moves for some of them. It's a shame this content can't be found in the main campaign, though. There's another type of side quest that you can find on the map of Hyrule, and that's gathering materials for people in need. 
These quests have text-based descriptions that really flesh out the world of Hyrule. Some are simple fetch quests to unlock a combo for a hero, but others have memorable stories behind them that build the world and character. One series of these quests sees you helping Mifa build the Zora armor, a glistening garb Zora princesses handcraft to propose to their future spouses, something she clearly made for her crush. It's Link. She likes Link. Another side quest sees Link just simply building a training dummy for the kids in Hateno, and he proceeds to practice with them all day. Despite this deluge of fetch quests, the game never really feels grindy. There's plenty of mules and weapons that can increase item drop rates, and the Sheikah sensor tells you in which levels you can find specific materials. I got through the whole game, and 100%ed it too, so I clearly enjoyed my time with it, but I doubt I could have done it if the game wasn't based on Breath of the Wild. Seeing Hyrule in its glory days left me awestruck. Most of all, unlocking cool characters had me leaping out of my seat with a giddy squeal! Another way this game made me squeal with excitement was with its story. Uh, Keegan? What's up? Are you done yet? Dude, I told you it would take a while. Just... Have a bit of patience. But no, 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 man. It's it's got nothing to do with my patience. It's just uh, something uh, came up. Can you maybe take care of it on your own? What? Uh, well, hmm. Yeah, I, I guess I could take him. <laughs> what am I saying? Of course I can. I'm freaking cheap panda. <laughs> Keep doing you, bro. I've got it covered. Great. Thanks, G. No worries. <laughs> the marketing hyped up this game to be an epic prequel to my favorite game of all time. It would tell the epic tale of heartbreak and disaster that left Hyrule in ruins. It began with a cutscene of Zelda's powers awakening, which turned on a distant guardian. The little guardian opened a portal and leaped through it, followed close behind by Ganon's malice. It was time travel. <laughs> Within the first minute of the game, all my expectations were crushed! The idea of going back and changing the past was interesting to me, but it wasn't what I wanted. I remained optimistic anyhow. I mean, perhaps they still failed despite their attempts to stave off the calamity. Once I got my hands on the game and began playing the full campaign, I enjoyed many of the new characters introduced in the Zelda universe. Astor, a cloaked servant of Ganon, was most intriguing to me. You see, in the canon of Breath of the Wild, there was this fortune teller that told the king of the Divine Beasts and the Guardians. As it turns out, Corrupting these unknown machines was the only way Ganon could have won. Many have wondered, including myself, if the fortune teller was a servant of Ganon who set up Hyrule for failure. Was Astor this unnamed fortune teller? I was hoping we'd learn more about Astor's character throughout the game, but to my dismay, his character was the flattest of them all. He was reduced merely to an evil guy with an evil laugh. <laughs> and nothing else. He basically just does whatever Harbinger Ganon says with no motivation to do so. Age of Calamity introduces Suga, Koga's right-hand man. This duo is delightful, and I was so happy that they got a healthy amount of screen time in this game. So, if they can fix that Sheikah thingamajig, what does that mean for me? I mean us. That thingamajig will tell them where we are what we're doing. Uh, uh, our cover would be blown, huh? Sounds like bad news. <laughs> Suga is the more level-headed of the two, and despite them both being evil, they care much for each other and their fellow clansmen. Suga calls out Astor on his selfish plans and holds his own against powerful heroes like Link and Urbosa. He died defending Koga from Astor's betrayal, giving Koga the push he needed to join the heroes. Both of these characters are just great in my eyes. Finally, we have the little guardian that started it all. His name is Terrico, by the way. I don't know why the devs decide to withhold his name from us until the very end of the game, like it's some massive reveal that he's got an irrelevant name. It's such a stupid element of the writing. It's like a villain in some random action movie going, 
You knew me as the master of evil, but I'm here to tell you that my name is Joe! That's irrelevant. Look, Kiriko's cute, but he ain't gonna fool me. I've seen this trope far too many times. R2-D2, Wally, BB-8, I've become numb to cute marketable robots in my 19 years of life. Plus, this little bugger's got bigger problems than winning over my affection. He's incredibly problematic to the story. Yeah, I get that Shika technology is already kinda whack, but come on. Kiriko is one tiny little god of a machine. He can do just about anything except heat over your leftover Marco's pizza, which... Now that I think about it, it's a massive misstep for the writers. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going off topic, but seriously, he's just a writing cop-out. He's only activated by Zelda's powers. He can time travel, he's a camera, he's a music box, he's a tank who can take on Link single-handedly, he can magically delete Ganon's energy shield thingy just by jumping at him and blowing up? Like, what? He does one other thing, which is so stupid, and simultaneously so cool, that it may have made me wee a little in my pants. So, despite the gang's attempts to prevent the Great Calamity, it's still too late. When all seems lost, Zelda breaks down into tears! Now get this. You ready? Are you sure? Okay. When her tears touch Terrico, he summons the four champions from the future! It was so epic to see Yunobu leap in with that clutch save on Daruk's life, and to see Teba appear from the smoke after dusting the drones chasing Rivali. But. Not only were their means of time travel stupid, but once they got there, they were only just war troops for the battle and had little character development time with their respective ancestors. There were a few attempts to build character, like Mifa and Sudan having a sibling moment, and Riju encouraging Urbosa to stand and fight to the end! Only for them to be rescued two seconds later. Okay, now for Princess Zelda. Princess Zelda from Breath of the Wild is possibly the best Zelda to ever appear in the series. Even though it's only shown through memories and a diary, her character is very complex. Age of Calamity had little work to do when coming up with an arc for her. Just steal the homework from the Breath of the Wild writers. Problem with doing that is it completely throws off the pacing of the game, yet they keep trying to force Zelda to have the same arc when, logically, she can't. Uh, let me explain. In Breath of the Wild, the characters never knew the end of the world was right around the corner. From the very start of Age of Calamity, Zelda and the gang are in a panic to prepare for the Great Calamity. There isn't any downtime for these characters to get to know each other, and that's something that's essential for Zelda's arc. I think the most important factor in Zelda's arc is her relationship with Link. In Age of Calamity, we're supposed to believe Link and Zelda developed the same friendship in a mad frenzy to save the world as their many months spending nearly every moment together in Breath of the Wild. In Breath of the Wild, she is at first hateful and jealous of Link, and we slowly see the two become closer friends and create such a bond that Zelda's love for him was the one thing that could activate her divine powers. Then in Age of Calamity, the most we get is a blush from Zelda and BOOM! Relationship achieved! Man, I wish it was that easy to get a girlfriend. <laughs> Doesn't bother me anyways. That just means Mifa has a better shot of being with Link than Zelda in Age of Calamity. <laughs> oh my gosh, Chief! <laughs> Wait, you talking about Leaf again? Oh, you heard that? Well, yeah, but Leafa? I I've told you, dude, it's Mink. Dude, Mink sucks. Who would name their ship after a slimy water weasel? Oh yeah, like Leaf is any better? Leaf is like the name of your strange dawn that you're bummed to find is coming to Thanksgiving. It's not better, cause Z-Link trumps them both. <gasps> How dare you even consider such a thing? How dare I? You ship Link with a fish! You sick little- So what? Mifa's a person too. Why make love to a fish when he's got a lovely human girl that he spent- I think you're just me. racist. Whoa, whoa, what did you say? I said, I think you're racist. <laughs> you're forgetting one thing. Mifa is dead. She's 
dead! You're not promoting necrophilia now, are you? Well, yes, but... Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Got you there! I'm not racist! Z-Link is just objectively better! Well, you see, she's not dead in Age Calamity, though. In what? Age of Calamity. The, you know, the canon spin-off game where the champions live through the Great Calamity. Oh, so Link and Mifa have and will spend more time together than Link and Zelda have in that timeline. Okay. But, but in Breath of the Wild, Z-Link still makes way more sense than Mifa. Correct. Oh, so you agree. Yes, I do agree in that situation Z-Link is better, but I just like to imagine what it would be like if Link and my favorite Divine Beast pilot were a couple. Oh, is that it? Yep. Dang. Why do I give you such a hard time? Heck, I'm not even a boring loser nerd like you. I'm just wasting my time talking about this garbage. I'm... I'm sorry, man. Oh, no sweat. Well, I'm gonna leave you to it. Cool, Chi. Oh, wait, I feel like I came in here for a different reason. But now I forgot it. Oh, yeah! <laughs> no clue. Well, I'll let you know if I remember. Gotcha. Chi? Chi? Hello? I've been focusing so much on the story because as you all know, I'm an enthusiastic writer and I love stories, so rather than just complaining about Age of Calamity, let's see what we can do to fix it. There are two routes we can take to fix a story like this. Number one, fix what's already there, or number two, scrap it all and start from the beginning. First, let's try fixing what we have. And by this, I mean we have to keep the original premise of time travel. So for this to work, there needs to be a longer campaign. Instead of 20 levels, maybe... 25 or 30? Use these added levels to flesh out the characters and their arcs. Let's play a few levels before Terrico is even found and sends everyone into a frenzy. Perhaps recruiting all the champions, then finding Terrico would help? Speaking of that little robot, let's limit his powers. He only needs a few abilities to balance his power as a character instead of having him pull abilities from between his metal butt cheeks whenever it's convenient. Perhaps they recruit help from the future by other means. Please, literally anything but Terrago. Then there's the other route, which I much prefer. It's scrapping everything and starting over. Yeah, I get why they chose the time travel route. Who wants to play a game where you lose? You. I do. I want to do that. I want to play that game. Please. So, let's make our favorite characters suffer, shall we? First thing we need to establish, Terrago doesn't exist. Never did. We want to tell the full and true story of the Great Calamity. Make sure the start isn't rushed. Take our time with it. We'd dive deeper into Zelda's character and the relationship of the champions. We'd get to see her full evolution from hating Link to eventually loving him through their interactions. Our characters don't always have to be in a mad rush to save the world. Give them some downtime. To provide some tension and action during this section of the game, have the champions fight Astor and the Yiga clan and try to learn about their devious plans. Give us tidbits of Astor's backstory and motivation as the prologue goes on. Give me some juicy drama at the start, but keep Ganon out of the picture for now. When we introduce the big pig himself, have him appear at the same time as he does in Breath of the Wild, but this time, he begins his attack with the help of Astor and the Yiga. At this point, it's revealed what Astor's plan was the whole time. The Guardians and the Divine Beast Hyrule counted on are now corrupted by malice. This battle takes place over many levels. These levels see us play as the four champions, all splitting off to reach their respective Divine Beasts. Link, Zelda, and Impa race back to the castle to help as many people as possible. Another level sees them fleeing the castle, trying to reach Kakariko and Hateno Village. Perhaps we even see a level at Akala Citadel, where Hyrule made its last stand. Finally, we get boss battles against the four Blights, and unfortunately, the four pilots meet their demise to them. We play as Link defending Zelda at Fort Hateno before he nearly dies and her powers activate to save him. There's one final segment where we play as Zelda, able to waste hundreds of guardians with her powers. The final cutscene sees Link collapsing and being placed in the Shrine of Resurrection. 
Hyrule's only hope set to awaken 100 years in the future. It's a sad and heartbreaking ending, yeah, but that's okay. Breath of the Wild was all about breaking the norm, so break the norm of stories and age of calamity by having a tragic ending. I'm sure players would still enjoy the game even if they lost at the end. I mean, I know I would. I was hoping for a piece of media to make me cry horribly, but age of calamity didn't deliver what I thought I was going to get from the marketing. I hope you see now why I'm so polarized by this game. I still had a tremendous time with it, but I don't think it's even touching my list of favorite games because of its disappointing nature. It could have easily been an incredibly moving work of art, but instead it just ended up being an average Zelda spinoff that nerds like me will just eat up. I hope we keep getting Hyrule Warriors titles despite this. I would leap at the chance to bash monsters on the head and nerd out about my favorite video game franchise once again. And that's a wrap. <laughs> That turned out pretty well. Now time to tell Chi about this. Wait a second. Chi was hurt when he came in. How did I miss that? Oh no. Chi? 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 Great fight, Chi, but it looks like you've finally come to the end of your rope. What? Why are you doing this? <laughs> I am so glad you asked. See, Negajugga and I have had this whole thing planned out. And according to our schedule, I still have about five more minutes to tell you all about it before I have to kill you. Oh, great. Don't. Just don't. Kill me now, please! Dude, keep your shirt on, please! Jeez! I am here to claim my rightful host! Your... your rightful host? What? Who... who do you think you are? Ah! Uh, I am Negachi! And I'm the... The, um... Negajug, what am I? Don't, don't look at me. me. So, I don't know what I am exactly, but I know what I have to do. Keegan is your host, and I need him. So, the best way to get to him is to take you out of the picture. He wants me? What was that? I don't, I don't know. know. I'll, I'll check, check it out. out. Well, well, well. Once again, we meet. We killed you! How are you back? Yes. What? No, no, no. How did you survive all those beatings we gave you? I just did. That's literally it. Is that, is that even legal? Your life isn't legal. And after all of that, they still didn't put the creamer in my coffee, but you know how it is. And Oh, look at the time. Oh, by the way, Chi, um, this isn't personal at all. Uh, it's purely instinctual, but I I've got to kill you now, so... Goodbye! No! Oh. <laughs> oh, look! It's the man of the hour. Chi, are you okay? What did they do to you? Eh, yeah, nothing but a beating. Thanks for the save. Well, can you fight? I can always fight. So, we're back to fighting now, are we? Ah, oh, no, I've got two to deal with. But, 
that's what the army's for. Jugs! <laughs> Capture Keegan! Kill Chi! <laughs> She needs a brew. He's over here. Keegan, cover us. Will do. Chi, I've got tea. Drink up. Oh. Are you serious? Oh, don't get your bloody knickers in a twist. I'll turn the head away. Thanks. source of expendable soldiers. Huh, I can relate. It's like they keep spawning in. I believe you're onto something, Mr. Jog. It's like they, they're, they're pouring through different avenues. We've got to split up and snuff out their sources. Split up? Have you learned nothing of last time? Well, we've got to do something. Mr. Jog, Stormy, let's stop this army. Chi and I can be a distraction. We'll draw their attention while you take out their spawn points. After all, they want me and him. Righto. Let's go, lads. I'll take the bathroom. I'll take out the source. Their outpost located on the porch. What? No! I want that one. Come on, mate. This is no time to stop bickering. What if I get there first? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. What? How'd you beat me? I simply used the closer door. What? Not fair. Mr. 
Mr. Jug! Rather than scrapping each other, why don't we scrap together? Ugh, fine. Great, come here! They're still coming! I believe they have another outpost at the other porch. There's another porch? How many porches can a one-story suburban house have? Let us commence forth! Can you hold them off for me, please? Will do. chance at life. This time, I'm, I'm not gonna fail. Whoa! That's a lot of chunks. I can't stop them! Oh, but maybe I can! and we just kill them. Join me. Why are you doing this? I just... I, I just have to! I, please. tried to kill me! Yes, but what he said was intriguing. He said that he didn't know why he was attacking us. He just had to. Like, like an instinct. 
You know, if we kept him alive, maybe we could interrogate him and find out more about him. I mean, look at him, Chi. He's just like a negative version of you. Just like that Jug's a negative version of Danny. Chi, does their existence not even interest you? Uh, please, let's keep them alive so we can find out what the heck's going on with them. Fine. Wait a moment. Where's that bloody Jug gone? What? Oh, the other one too. Gosh dang it! They got away! I knew I should have killed him when I had the chance. Well, is it all over now? I guess so now that those two have bugged off. So, can we get back to our game now? Danny, it's been many a fortnight since we played that game. So? I still remember it was my turn. The game's probably been put up now. You know what? Let's go break out here and escape. Start a new game. Same teams. Really? Yes! What is this you're talking about? We used to play board games while you were in the negative dimension. Can I join? I'm sure we could fit you in somehow. Cool. Hey, Keegan. Your friends seem alright. <laughs> Let's get started, shall we? And Britt, catch us up on whatever happened to make you guys come back. Oh, right! Well, I'm not sure how exactly it started, but something weird was definitely going on. Where's Chi? Uh, we lost you, bozo. Nega Jug, how did you? Yeah, yeah I, dragged I dragged you out into the car, car after you passed out. out. You know, you're completely useless. useless. Not only do I wear the pants in the relationship and you're not, but you're just naked out in the freezing cold. I'm not out in the freezing cold. I'm, I'm right here in the car. I can change that. Get out of the car. <laughs> what are you going to do when you kick me out? Drive away? You're a milk jug. Oh yeah, you want to try me? Gentlemen, gentlemen. What? How the? did you get in here? My methods do not matter. I mean you no harm. I just think that rather than you two bickering over your failures, you should relish in it. After all, everything always works out for the best. What do you want? I've been spending some time watching you, and I found myself inspired by not only your existence, but your strength and your fervor. So I'd like to offer the both of you a job. <laughs> 